What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today is a very special day because the Edelbrocks are here and after months and months of waiting for them we finally got them and we're gonna open these babies up i'll talk a little bit about the heads and then finally we'll install these on the 428 and i'm just getting super excited i cannot wait so let's get right to it and open these up and these just look insane i've never owned any pair of aluminum heads before so just seeing these two big old chunks of aluminum that is just crazy to me it's just so cool and i just cannot wait to put these on the 428 man it's gonna be awesome but uh, i did actually weigh these um these heads are 30 pounds each and the original cast iron heads weigh about 50 pounds each so we're looking at a 40 pound weight difference between both of them but uh let's take a little bit look at the specs here and then i'll talk to you guys about why i decided to go with these heads all right so here are some specs and the performance range for these heads is 1500 to 6500 rpms and the thing about these is that they're actually modeled after the 427 medium riser heads the deck the intake flange and all that it's all in the stock location the only thing we have to worry about is that these heads are not compatible with the high riser the low riser and the tunnel port intakes so just be mindful of that when you're choosing an intake with these heads um, the model number that I have is the 665 which is set up for the hydraulic roller camshaft um, a very very good feature about these heads is that it has the large 428 Cobra jet valves and they are 2.09 in the intake and 1.66 in the exhaust um, let me see another feature is that they have the 16 bolts uh, Cobra jet pattern as we can see right here right there those two extra holes so if you guys need that there you go you have them on the heads pretty pretty cool um, let's take a look at the back of the sheet right here and then we can see that 665 we have a 72 cc combustion chamber so there you go these are some really really nice heads um, I'm going to do a quick uh, comparison of the original cast iron heads and let's just take a quick look and see what the difference is. Here are the heads side by side and the originals have definitely seen better days. It's just got loads of oil caked on there. But these are the original ones that came on that 428 that I bought on the last video. Um, I kind of wish I had Cobra Jet heads so I can really show you guys the differences but the reality of it is that most of us don't have Cobra Jets you know and that's the biggest reason why I bought these is because they're getting pretty hard to find and when you do find them they're like 1300 bucks or 1500 and then you still have to pay someone to you know work them over and then you'll end up being at two thousand dollars just like these heads. Um, you can put the big valves in these heads, but then again, you have to find someone who's a pretty good expert, someone who is knowledgeable to do that. And here in California, machine shop cost is just, it starts to get pretty crazy once you get up there. 
So that's why I think for ease of convenience, I just decided to go with the Edelbrox. They're just ready to go and pretty much no problems at all. But the biggest differences that you will see are the valves. So let me turn this head over and we'll take a look at the valves. And check that out. Pretty dingy. But you can see right away how these valves are a lot bigger than the original ones. Um, these early heads, they're actually pretty good, uh, but it just depends, again, just how much money you want to throw on these heads before you reach, you know, the level of the aluminum head is the big, uh, you know, the big decision. If you want to throw more money into these heads or just get something that is pretty much ready to go, trouble free. And these are aluminum, so there is a lot more benefits when it comes to aluminum as well. You know, heat dissipation, uh, running higher compression ratios, stuff like that. But uh, enough talk. Uh, I think it's time to install these. Um, I do have some ARP studs that I bought. I'll put the part numbers on the description below. As always, I've got some head dowels that I picked up. And we've also got the Felpro performance gaskets. And, man, I could tell you right now, this stuff is getting super expensive i've had a lot of people tell me that the fe stands for freaking expensive and yeah it's really looking like that's the case but um let's get these heads installed i do have to tap in the oil restrictor for these i got the restrictor kit from precision oil pumps i'll put a video a link for the video if you guys want to check that out where i did all the oil modifications but enough talk let's get these heads mounted and let's get it done
you guys check it out the aluminum heads are mounted and torqued down this thing is just looking so amazing i just <laughs> cannot believe that it is to this level now but i will tell you guys now my right arm it is just tired from torquing all these studs all these bolts man it's just a lot of stuff going on here but uh, i did 110 on the top and 100 on the bottom bolts there um but my anxiety was just going way up when i was doing this because the last thing that you want to hear is a pop and the last thing that you want to feel is your torque wrench getting super loose when you're trying to torque these down man that would just be a nightmare but thankfully no problems at all installing these heads but uh, let's talk a little bit about the process of installing these and I'll give you guys some tips and a couple of issues that I came across when installing these heads. So the first thing I want to talk about is the piston to valve clearance and as you saw in the previous clip I put a piece of clay on the top of the piston and by doing that we need to put on the whole rocker assembly and put on some uh, push rods there but these being the uh, Harlan Sharp rockers they require a special cup and I tried to make my own push rod checker tools but this thing just failed miserably so I'll have to order some but I don't think the valve actually moved because it didn't squish the clay but uh, I highly highly doubt that it's going to be a problem with this mild build um, I think if we were running like a more serious uh, engine like it says right here where the piston to valve clearance is more common then yeah we should thoroughly check that you know but we don't have any dome pistons or high lifts anything like that I have a TRW L2303 piston which is modeled after the Cobra Jet piston so I highly highly doubt we'll have any problems with piston to valve clearance the second thing that I came across when installing the rocker arms is that it was hitting the stud right here and I also had a problem where it was not seating down on, on the block right here and yeah this is what we have to do is shim it which I had no idea that we could even shim these. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to talk too much about the rockers and geometry and all that. Uh, I've, <laughs> I have never done this before. So I'm going to have to do a lot, a lot of research on how to do this properly on the next video, which you guys will see. But yeah, sometimes if you're running studs, you will have to clearance it just a little bit so that it won't hit the end stand here. And yeah, you also have to shim this, which I had no idea that this was even possible. But uh, <laughs> there you go. The third thing is just make sure that you're installing the head gaskets correctly. And just remember front is front. And it may look like the one gasket is put on wrong because it's flipped over but that is the correct way and you will know this by the corner of the block right here there's supposed to be a corner of the gasket sticking out as you can see right there and the last thing I want to talk about is torquing down these aluminum heads and like I said earlier, just be very, very careful and pay a lot of attention when you're torquing these down. You know, pay attention to the sounds, the, the, the way your torque wrench feels because that's a lot of torque that you're putting on these. And the last thing that you want to happen is you're reaching your final torque spec and you hear a pop and your torque wrench is really loose. Like, <laughs> that is just a nightmare I do not want. But that's going to be it. I hope you guys like the videos. I hope you guys like the content. Let me know. What do you guys think about aluminum heads? That's it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Boom.